Dear colleagues, as we unfortunately had to cancel this year's World Congress in Montreal, we thought it would be a good idea to at least share some highlights from the virtual Congress that took place in February. Before the video starts, I would like to announce that the 2022 World Congress in Taipei, Taiwan will take place from June 9th to the 12th. I look forward to seeing you there in person and now please enjoy the video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel below for free so you can watch more videos in the next weeks. Thank you. So this symposia is focusing on <clears throat> the role of muscarinic receptors in different disorders. And so my role in this, this symposia is to give you a brief outline of the role of muscarinic M1 receptors in the human cholinergic system, and then to focus on the title of my talk, which is the muscarinic M1 receptor has a role in the etiology and treatment of schizophrenia. So acetylcholine acts through two families of receptors, the nicotinic receptors and the muscarinic receptors. Uh, the nicotinic receptors are ligand gate and ion channels, and this is the family of the receptors that acetylcholine uh, facilitates fast neurotransmission. The muscarinic receptors are G-protein coupled receptors. And within the family of muscarinic receptors in the human brain, there are five receptors labeled muscarinic M1 to M5. And it's through having a mixed distribution through different areas of the brain and differential expression by different cell types that muscarinic receptors can modulate many of the different actions of acetylcholine. So now having put the muscarinic M1 rece uh, receptors in context, I'll now move on to talk about their role in uh, schizophrenia. <clears throat> what we did do was find uh, measure parenzepine binding in a large cohort of patients with schizophrenia and a large number of control subjects. And when we started to look at parenzepine binding to the M1 receptor in the patients with schizophrenia, what we thought was there was some evidence that there may actually be low levels of M1 receptors in the brains of patients with the disorder. To address that uh, hypothesis, we sent these data to a statistician at Melbourne University who carried out a kernel density analysis. A kernel density analysis is the simplest way to see how many populations are likely to be present in any particular data set. So here is the kernel density analysis. Now, if you now look at the control data, what you can actually see here is the most likely fit, in fact, almost certainly the fit, the best fit to this data is a single population. By contrast, when you look at the muscarinic M1 receptors in schizophrenia, you can see here clear evidence that there are indeed two uh, populations within the syndrome of schizophrenia. <clears throat> what we've done since then is call this population here, the muscarinic M1 receptor deficit subgroup, <clears throat> and the remaining group, a non-deficit subgroup within schizophrenia. So now, what we did in the meantime was ask the question, is there any evidence that in fact, the muscarinic M1 receptor in the brains of people with schizophrenia will respond the same way to drugs that target that receptor? So we've developed a number of novel assays for measuring the activity of the M1 receptor in the brains of postmortem human brain. And this data is showing you the effect of orthos the orthosteric agonist oxytremin on the specific binding of gamma GTPS to the M1 receptor. In other words, the first stage of receptor signaling. What you can see is in the presence of increasing concentrations of agonist, when you look at the green line and the blue line, they're essentially superimposed, which means the responsiveness of the controls and the non-deficit group are essentially the same to that agonist. By contrast, you're seeing a marked right shift in the M1 receptor deficit group which suggests these people actually may re be resistant to treatment with muscarinic receptors at the orthoceric site on the receptor. Now, there are now two ways of targeting the muscarinic M1 receptor. The first is through the orthosteric site where acetylcholine binds. The second is through an allosteric site, which is distal to the orthosteric site, but when activated, increases the affinity of the orthosteric site for acetylcholine and therefore essentially increases the activity of the receptor. So what I'm showing you here is a novel assay we developed to measure the sensitivity of the M1 receptor to activation with BQCA, a muscarinic receptor allosteric modulator. 
And what I want you to focus on again here is the white bars and the blue bars and the red bars. And what this is showing you is that in people with the deficit form of schizophrenia, which are the blue bars, they are not responding well to the same dose of allosteric modulator as the controls in a non-deficit group. And that's true for the cortex, the striatum, and many areas of the hippocampus. So once again, this suggests that patients with deficit form of schizophrenia may actually be resistant to stimulate, stimulation of the muscarinic M1 receptor. So in conclusion, <clears throat> I think I've shown you that the muscarinic M1 receptor is a viable drug target for the treatment of schizophrenia. There is a subgroup, about 25% <clears throat> of patients with schizophrenia that have a marked deficit in cortical muscarinic M1 receptors. This subgroup may not respond optimally to drugs that activate the muscarinic M1 receptor. <clears throat> and therefore, a better understanding of the pathophysiology of the subgroup with muscarinic M1 receptor deficit schizophrenia is needed to identify more drug targets for treating that form of disorder. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation for me to come here today and talk about some of the work that I've been doing, uh, looking at the role of M1 uh, signaling in cognitive and behavioral symptoms of psychosis. So the proposed mechanisms of how reduction in M1 receptor mediated signaling may uh, contribute to, to psychotic symptomarity and cognitive symptoms in psychosis is that um, the M1 receptor is highly expressed in the prefrontal cortex and hippocampal regions and it there has a role together with an interaction with the M4 receptor to modulate glutamate signaling involved in neuroplasticity or long-term potentiation processes. The M4 receptor subtype, which is heavily expressed in the hippocampal and striatal regions, is actually a heteroreceptor on glutamatergic and dopaminergic neurons, and thereby modulates these neurotransmitter systems at the level of hippocampus and striatum as well. Now here on the panel to the right, you see seminal work that was done by Anthony Grace and Daniel Lodge, who had developed a rodent model uh, called the MAM model, um, which was a model that um, recapitulated the um, neurophysiological, but also neurohistological and behavioral symptoms seen in schizophrenia in, in vivo. And the importance of their work was that they actually showed with single cell recordings that the hyperactivity of the hippocampus could drive via the nucleus accumbens and the ventral pallidum um, an, an increase of dopamine release into the nucleus accumbens. And so the idea is that the, um, this hyperactivity in the hippocampus may be related to a loss of M1 and potentially M4 signaling at this level. And this, these studies also show that um, these upstream changes in the muscarinic system causing potentially this hippocampal hyperactivity could lead to exuberation of dopamine release into the nucleus accumbens that is associated with psychotic symptoms. So we wanted to um, look at this relationship between M1 receptor binding in uh, patients and um, see if we could find any associations with these um, clinical and cognitive symptoms. So we measured, uh, we used a randomized placebo controlled crossover design using SPECT and pharmacological MRI. We used um, uh, IDEX, radioactive uh, iodide dexetamide, which is an M1 receptor um, preferring M1 preferring receptor um, radio tracer. Uh, and if you want to see the pharmacodynamic um, characterization of this uh, radio tracer, please look at the paper that's published in 2015. And we uh, looked at differences between patients with um, psychotic symptoms and controls, natural controls in the fMRI response to a selective M1, M4 antagonist, bipyridin. Bipyridin has, in humans, shown to have approximately a tenfold uh, selectivity uh, for M1 over M4. So this um, design was counterbalanced. So in visit one, patients got clinical assessments, fMRI scan, and cognitive assessments. Only patients got 
uh, scanned using uh, IDEX uh, for M1 receptor binding because we failed to get permission to scan the matched healthy controls. And then there was at least a minimum of seven days between the second visit, um, in which they got, again, the clinical assessments and then the fMRI scan and uh, cognitive assessment uh, using the CAN tab. This is all published uh, in the paper below. So because we did see uh, an association between both uh, negative symptom severity and verbal learning and memory and the M1 binding potential in the DLPFC of these patients, we looked at a mediation analysis to see whether the M1 binding potential was mediating these effects. Um, this was not significant. So we did not find uh, any evidence for a mediatory effect of binding of the M1 receptor in these uh, symptoms. So what we saw was that the lower M1 binding in the DLPFC seems to be related to negative symptom severity. Um, we do need follow-up studies on this um, where we have patients with a broader range or bigger variance in severity of psychotic symptoms. Um, also, we saw that M1 binding in the DLPFC was associated with uh, overall verbal learning and memory ability. Um, the M1 binding in the hippocampus specifically seemed to be related to memory. So these, um, we saw some interesting results here because we found a, um, we found a group by drug interaction effect in the uh, superior temporal gyrus and parahippocampal gyrus, and similarly for memory in the superior temporal gyrus and parahippocampal gyrus, in which the patients with psychotic disorders showed a significantly greater um, hyper um, activity in response to the M1 M4 antagonist by pyridine. Um, for the learning phase, um, controls show a similar response to bipyridine, except for this response was smaller than that was seen in the patients with psychosis, suggesting that there might be a loss of M1 receptor 